All right, hey everyone, this is Ash. Welcome back to the King's Speech. A uh, so few housekeeping items before we kind of dive into this week's uh, reaction review stuff. So, last week and this upcoming week are going to be a little bit busy for me uh, with work and everything else. Uh, so, I apologize, unfortunately, I didn't manage to get out uh, my Elite and Midland Saga videos last week. Been having computer troubles and things with that. Uh, so hopefully I can rectify that this upcoming weekend and then put out some more stuff. Uh, I already noted this on Twitter, but unfortunately I won't be able to do any Alita or Vinland Saga read-throughs uh, this weekend just because I just don't have the time right now uh, to kind of dedicate uh, the time, like mental space I need for that. Uh, but next week onwards I will be on a vacation for about two weeks. Uh, so I'll have a little bit more downtime during then, so I'll try to upload a few more videos to kind of make up for the deficit the past little while. Uh, so I appreciate everyone kind of being patient with me until that happens. Uh, so don't worry, I have not stopped, you know, doing the read-throughs for Alita or Vinland Saga. No, I haven't dropped it uh, or anything like that. It's just been super busy lately, so I just haven't had the time to uh, properly dedicate stuff to it like I wanted to. Uh, so without further ado, uh, we're going to jump into the weekly Shonen Jump reaction and review stuff. Uh, so I think I mentioned this on last week's videos that uh, I'm adding Spy X Family to the recording roster. Uh, so it does come out, I think it's a bi-monthly series, uh, so it comes out every two weeks. So this is one of the weeks where it's coming out. Uh, so today expect One Piece, Promised Neverland, and Spy X Family reviews, uh, reaction reviews to come out. And without further ado, let's dive into the first one of the week uh, with One Piece Chapter 959, Samurai. And we see Gang Badges, Oh My Family, Volume 9, Inside the Country of Dressrosa, Scarred by Battle. And you see Capone just doing kind of this mobster pose, a little gun out as they're making their way uh, into Dressrosa. And then you see... Uh, back when they were in the preparation, two days before the battle. This puts our total manpower at about 4,200. You have Kinoan going, well done everyone. Use your remaining time to travel and prepare. Let us meet at the promised port. You see the Yakuza leader just going, yeah, rah. He's like, you got it. And you have Frankie going, all right folks, let's finish up enough ships to carry 5,000 men. And they're like, you bet. He's like, can you move all these ships to the port in time? We're on top of it, boss Franosuke. He's like, good. And you see Itachi Port Kuri. And you see a bunch of, you know, very Japanese looking ships, almost like the Shogun's one, you know, with the like wooden railings and the Japanese kind of structures on. You just see a line of them all along the port in Kuri. Then you see Usopp going, we're going to meet up with our friends at Amigasa Village now, so we can leave on the sunny on the big day. You have all the carpenters and the minks going, thanks for all the help. You guys are incredible shipwrights. And Frankie's like, don't mention it. Now let's wind up and, uh, oh no, sorry, it's Usopp going, don't mention it. Now let's wind up and suck the Animal Kingdom pirates in the mouth. And they're like, yeah, yeah. And you see all around Wano and you see uh, Hyogoro back in the mines. And you see the prisoners getting all these weapons ready and they're pulling out cannons and everything. And he goes, Ocho and the others should be hauling the katanas here from Ringo. And they're like, we're prepping with whatever armor we've got already. We've got plenty of these weapons for ex export that we could use. Assuming we can figure them out. <laughs> uh, Alright, so you have all the samurai trying to figure out how to use these newfangled weapons. And then you have one of the car, one of the other ones going... We don't want people gathering too early or it might draw attention. On the morning of the big day, the Shogun's procession will go from the capital to the harbor. And then you see them going from the flower capital to Habu Port. And they go, once they've left for Onigashima, the fire festival begins in the capital. No one will pay any attention to us then. And you see the rabbit looking Yakuza guy going, the best timing would be to meet at the second hour of the bird just before sunset. And you see the mix going, but the Shogun still has officials left behind on the mainland. Be cautious all the way to the end. Don't let them report about us to Onigashima. And he's like, yeah. And you see back at Amigasa Village, Kuri. And you have a thing that's Chopper going, we can use all this stuff? And Hitetsu's like, of course. 
and you see your adorable little chopper just being like bedazzled by all the so you see this black chest which is full of samurai armor and you see choppers pull out a helmet and he's just all bedazzled by it and he's like oh what an awesome helmet i want to show this to Usopp." and you have brook one we'll be samurai warriors <laughs> Uh, this is not what Love Garso what Luffy says. I just absolutely love, you know, adorable little chopper dressed up in the samurai outfit with a little sword next to him. And Brooke with the same thing. Like, Brooke and Chopper look badass. Luffy, eh. Yeah, Luffy going, Kaido, if he tries to stop me, I'll slice him in two. And you have Carrot in the background going, Cho, bro, you guys look so cool. And you have uh, Brooke going, I can't imagine... Uh, losing now. You have Robin going, you're so cute. You look like horned beetles. <laughs> and then you see, uh, God, you see Mr. Sanji going, why don't you put on some of that stuff too? And you see Zoro just off to the side with N in his hand. He's going, nah, it'll only slow me down. And you have Shichi going, yeah, that's why your bounty is lower. Ha 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 ha. And he sees Zora getting all mad and he goes, Enma! And he just takes a slice out of the cliff that Sanji was standing on. And you have Shichi going, whoa, watch it, don't make me end you. And Nami's um, going, like, what do you th think you're doing? I, um, just, I don't really care about those stupid sanji Zoro interactions. Like, after the 10,000th time, it just lost its appeal like now it's just like oh look they're fighting oh ha 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 character interactions whatever you have robin talking to the others you have robin talking to nami shishilian wanda and karen going rochi said it's winter at the entrance to onigashima nami's like so it's cold and shishilian's like what do you mean entrance and i think that's wanda Either Wanda or Carrot going, the seasons are sharply different all over Wano. But we can handle the co cold thanks to our coats. And Shishilian goes, the climate is of less concern to us than the weather. And you see that the fox looking musketeer, I think it's the first time we got his name, is Consulat. And the zebra looking one, his name is Giovanni. And he goes, the big day should be a full moon, but it will be useless if it's hidden by clouds. And you have Nami going, that's true. If all of the minks transform like Carrot, there'll be a huge battle force. You see Wanda and... Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I couldn't... For a second, I could not tell that was Nami's face when it was like all smushed together. Like she and Wanda look almost exactly like twins except for the nose. And I'm just... Oh my god, Oda, come on. And then you have, what is it, Shishilian going, turning Su Long, oh no, this is a Wanda going, turning Su Long depends on the luck of the moment. What's more important is just that the cat, is just that the cat viper and the guardians arrive here in time. Then you have Chopper looking off at Luffy who's staring off the coast. He's like, what's the matter, Luffy? And you have, of course. Uh, you have Luffy going, well, Big Bomb's already here, but Jinbei isn't yet, even though he was the one who helped us escape from her. And you see him flashing back to Jinbei saying, allow me to hold down the end of the line. And Luffy going, don't forget, Jinbei, your captain is me now. We'll be waiting in Wano, so you'd better show up. He made up his mind, he joined our crew. And you have Zoro going, yeah, we'd be happy to have him. And there's still time. I'm sure he'll come if he's alive. Yes, he's alive. He'll come. Ugh. It only took how many chapters for Luffy to finally give a shit about the man he abandoned who had to clean up his mess. I'm being a little salty about it, but I will talk about that when I do the review bits at the end. Then you have Ibisu Town outside the flower capital. Ushimutsu Kozo came by, but I haven't heard of any thefts in the capital. Still, here's the gold. And you see all the citizens just cheering, going, We can't take part in the fire festival tomorrow. But, at least we can buy some water to drink. And then you see Okabora Town Kuri. Okay, yeah. Okabora Town uh, Kuri. Uh, you have Hold'em showing up. Animal Kingdom Pirates headliner Hold'em. 
and he's holding up one of the citizens going, you must know something about this. We burned down the bandit's mountain, but they didn't come back to get vengeance on us, and the crops at the farm are still being stolen in huge quantities. Well, do you? And he's like, nope, not a thing. They say the samurai preparing for... Oh, and you see the citizens behind them thinking, they say the samurai preparing for a big raid. Could that be what's behind all of this? In that case, we can't have them figuring it out. What should we do? And you have them going, what are you whispering about over there? And then you see Osuru coming out, and she goes, I will show you. Just don't hurt anyone here. And Holden just tosses the other guy aside, and go, the citizens are like, Osuru? And Holden's like, show me so you know something. And Osuru goes, you'll see if you follow me. It's a long trip, however. And you see her going, do they have so many people that they need a great amount of food for them all? Are you here in Wano somewhere, Ken? I was stunned when I saw Kikuno... Kiku Nojo. And she thinks to herself, I'll handle this. I won't let them find you. Just bring us back to the Kozuki days. And you have the citizens going, Osuru, please don't sacrifice yourself to cover for us. It's all right. Our dreaming, our dream of stuffing ourselves full before we die has been fulfilled. And she's staring at them in shock. He's like, what? And Holden's like, oh yeah? And then you see the night before the battle, you see, there it is, and you see these two, one looks like an eagle uh, smile user, uh, one that's similar with just like the bird feathers, and you see one, uh, it's got like butterfly wings, and they go, there it is, I see it all right. And then you see someone going, to do as you ordered. It's like, well, all right, and you see Kuri Beach, you see the little alcove where the sunny was hidden. And you have, if you want it done, that's easy enough. And you see a giant kaboom as the rocks just shatter and collapse from above where the sunny was. It comes bomb as they throw some bombs down to explode the entrance, cover it up. You have bombs away. You have Orochi sitting next to a snail phone, you know, just crossing off a little X on a map going, Mwahahaha. Next. And you see bridge between Kibi and Udon. And they're going, are you sure? This bridge is vital to the area. And he's like, shut up, next. He's like, when this is over, we'll rebuild it. And you see bridge between Ringo and Hakuma has also been blown up. And you see all the, all the Yakuza going, look, the great bridge that connects the regions. Why is this happening? Now we can't cross to the other bank. And you see him doing a next as he crosses off another X on his little map. And you see Itachi Port Kuri. And you see all the ships have just gotten blown up. He's like, none of these ships can sail now. He's like, very good. Mwahahaha. And you see Orochi back at the flower capital talking to himself going, I still have not seen the samurai for myself. But where to believe they flew here from 20 years in the past? From that burning castle? Hard to believe without seeing their heads in person. Hard to believe even with seeing them, I imagine. And you see the bridge between Kuri and Udon has been blown up as well. And you see him thinking back to what Yasue said. And he goes, so it's hard enough to get my vassals to believe the story. And then that idiot Yasue had to go and make it worse. You see him back to Yasue laughing while it was just a prank. Bwahaha. And he goes, he made it out to be a joke, but the intel is solid. Consider my words to be nonsense at your own peril. I have the power to act upon them. And you have Mwahaha as he crosses off another X on his map. And he goes, if I cut off all the routes to Tokage Port, what will you do then? 4,000 men? Very impressive. But not one of them will arrive there. And he goes, hear me, Akazaya Ghost. You will taste the despair of being utterly alone in the world. You will not even have a chance to t attempt your revenge. And you see presently Tokage Port Udon, you see the waves still storming everywhere. You see the loud bang. And you see Momonosuke going, stop this, all of you. This is nothing but suicide. Let us turn back for now to wait for another chance. And you see Kinemon going, if we let this opportunity pass, the next will not come for another year. And we cannot stay in hiding any longer than this. Our control over Udon will be revealed momentarily. Kaido will send his entire army to hunt down all of the rebels. There's only so much food that we can steal. Surely you heard about what happened before we left Kuri. The people of Okabore Town, believing in our plan to go into battle, took responsibility for our crimes. The village was burnt to the ground. You see just the flaming wreckage of 
Corey Villick, and you see Momonosuke gritting his teeth with tears streaming down his face, and the same with Shinobu. Kinemon's going, my wife was among them. Let us do this, Lord Momonosuke. Would you command us to flee and no further shame? And Momonosuke crying as out goes, then what happens to me? And Raiza goes, we want you to live, my liege. Find Lady Hiori and... and he goes, you cannot do this to me. And he goes, your Lord Father started out alone too. Oh, that's uh, Ashura's going, if we hadn't come across Lord Oden, we ne would never have been proper samurai. We were all untested youth. Go, they go, which is why, to the very last moment, we wish to be Lord Oden's samurai. I will admit that is a badass panel of all of them with their little hats as they do their pose. And you see them thinking back to, listen up people, our centuries of isolation are deeply tied to the Kozuki clan's existence. But eventually the time will come, the world will begin to shift, and before it does, you must open Wano's borders. And you see, 39 years ago in the flower capital, and you see men screaming out, hide your daughters, hide your wives, close up your shops. And you see a clank clonk. And in the capital, one man was the talk of the town. Hide your livestock, hurry, he's coming. Kozuki Oden has returned. And he's like, ah, you must have failed at sailing off again. Why don't you die already? And you see Oden with those... Uh, Walking out, wiring what looks like a super short kanono, and he's got the giant, you know, kind of samurai or not the samurai, the sumo ropes uh, tied to his back. And you see Enma and uh, the Ame no Habakiri at his uh, at his side. And he goes, "Ugh, I feel like I'm being crushed to death. It's too cramped." And you see all these citizens just like doing these warding signals, and you see a monk. Let's come out with like a rifle and a sword to stop Odin. So it looks like we're getting into the flashback and we're finally going to find out why everybody loves Kozuki Odin. Alright, uh, so we'll get through, uh, go through the chapter kind of page by page uh, with my thoughts on everything that's happening. Hmm. So I think like way a couple of months back, I theorized that when we first saw uh, the preparations for the fire festival, you know, they had the little uh, lantern boats that they're like, yeah, you know, we send these off into the sky on the night of the fire festival. This chapter kind of just like reinforces my theory that they're a bit, that when they rebuild the ships, they're going to basically make blimps. Because it looks like what, uh, what uh, Orochi did was he basically burst all the bridges so dammed the rivers so the ships couldn't make it through to the ports so it's like alright so either they could you know put them on wheels and take them over land but it's more than likely that they will take inspiration from the flying boats and make the ships into blimps so they can continue the raid on Onigashima like that um I love Brook and Chopper in the samurai armor. They look supremely badass. I love their aesthetic. Luffy, eh, this, eh, not as cool. And like I said, the like the gags that Oda is recycling over and over again. They just get so stale. Like oh ha ha ha, Sora and Sanji are fighting over bounties you know they're having a dick measuring contest again oh ha 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 how funny is that like that got tiring hundreds of chapters ago so it's like all right Oda like you need to change up your game uh so uh, Robin confirming you know, the entrance to the entrance to Onigashima is winter I think that kind of confirms what we've seen in the past you know where Drake was before on the island uh, where we've seen the artificial like mountains and trees and things. I think this is basically our confirmation that was Onigashima. Uh, the thought that hit me when I was thinking about the Minx, you know, going so long, is we know that there's, you know, like the whole clouds and everything above, uh, above uh, Onigashima right now, which is going to put a damper on so long. Uh, so the two thoughts that hit my head right then were, all right, if Big Mom falls into her amnesiac form again, 
Uh, she could use Zeus to kind of basically part the clouds on Onigashima to give them the advantage to have the Minx, you know, be able to see the full moon to go so long. Uh, Nami could probably also do something with that, you know, do some weather manipulation stuff uh, to help that. So that could potentially be something cool to look forward to and see. And I am just like, I'm just annoyed with Luffy. Like, I'm one of the very few people that, you know, at the end of, you know, chapter 900, whatever, when, you know, Luffy gives that big speech about, I'm your captain, Jinma, you have to listen to me. I'm the only one that's still pissed off about that because it's really bullshitty for Luffy to not act like a captain 99% of the time. And then to make a grandiose statement, you know, about how Jinbei is like, oh, Jinbei, I'm your captain, I'm ordering you to come back alive. And for me to take that seriously and be like, oh my god, look at Luffy, he's he's such a leader, oh my god, I can't believe it. Like, no, that's bullcrap. If he wants to be taken seriously as a captain, he needs to do it. He needs to be more responsible more of the time, but that's a completely different uh, conversation. I do not have the time to kind of get into with that. So that really annoys me. And the fact that, you know, Luffy now thinks of Jinbei when it's plot convenient that we're going to, you know, have him show up again, you know, in the midst of something, you know, like he did in Whole Cake, he'll come in an opportune moment to help someone out. And having Luffy, you know, after having been in Wano for how long now, after he's already seen Big Mom, and after seeing Big Mom, not even then having registered that, hey, if Big Mom's here, what the fuck happened to Jinbei? You know, where is he? For him to now go, oh my god, Jinbei, is he out there? Is he going to come back? Like, narrative choices like this by Oda just tick me off. Because it's kind of him, like, pinging at you and be like, hey, you remember Jinbei? You remember Jinbei's coming back? Huh? 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 So that really just annoyed me. Uh, yeah, I don't really give too much of a shit either about like the Okabore Osuru stuff like all right yeah that was great that you know there's rallying behind them whatever I don't really care because there's no chance that any of them are going to have been seriously injured or dead or anything like that uh, so saying oh no the village is burnt down really lacks any kind of emotional impact for me uh, same with the Sunny getting bombed and like covered up and everything. It's like, all right, the Straw Hats will show up. Gown Cannon, you know, have Sunny use Gown Cannon. Blow the rubble out of there and then they're free to go. So it's like, all right, minor setback for plot convenience to, you know, for Oda to make it feel like, you know, there's stakes now and there's tension of, oh no, how will they make it to the raid? What's going to happen? All of that. And I know this is just me, me like sounding like I'm super salty and being, you know, overly critical of Oda for having done this. And it's not me saying that, you know, the fact he chose to do it this way, it's what's bugging me. That's not really my problem with, uh, you know, him blowing up uh, the bridges and everything. But the fact, like, this is something I've talked about, you know, time and time and time and time again. Uh, with regards to the stuff happening in the new world is that if Oda wants me to believe you know that there is stakes and there is tension he needs to actually deliver on it and actually have consequences that last you know beyond the confines of a single arc so when he does stuff like this and he's supposed to make me feel like you know there's still the underdogs it's still gonna be some kind of challenge I find it very hard to believe when, you know, arc after arc he's proven that the Straw Hats will, you know, take everything lightly, won't take any of the challenges seriously. And even if they are set back, they'll overcome it with, you know, the absolute modicum of effort that it needs. And it's not really going to be a challenge for them to kind of overcome it. There won't be anything, you know, any serious consequence that'll kind of make them change their approach in the future so stuff like this just kind of adds to that feeling you're supposed to be like oh look at the shoguns conniving and all that it's like yeah but it's not really gonna lead to anything and i could be totally wrong about this you know oda could uh could come out of left field with something totally amazing and take you take all of this back 
But until then, I really don't buy what he's selling. But like I said, uh, the retainers, I felt like a glimmer of emotion when, you know, Kinemon and them were crying about, you know, everything that's happened and how they, how they have to, you know, still proceed with the plan, even though the odds are stacked against them. It tugged my heartstrings a little bit, but... They are still the weakest, you know, kind of real characters we've seen uh, compared to any other arc we've had. Like, I felt more for, you know, everyone in Dressrosa than I do feel for uh, these people. And some of them we've been with for hundreds of chapters. So it's a little bit disappointing that, you know, my emotional reaction to what should be a compelling scene of, you know, anguish and despair like this is all right yeah what's next let's let's just see how they kind of get over this i'm a little bit disappointed that my reaction is so blasé to you know that kind of stuff like i wish it wasn't like that but again it comes back to you know oda like i'll cut to actually get to this because this kind of ties into what we've done so far this oda is tied up too much of the retainer's personalities, motivations, drives, you know, all of their character has been too closely tied to their relationship to uh, Kozuki Oden. And Oda has really been overhyping him ever since we first heard about him. You know, chapter after chapter, it's been like, oh, everyone loves Oden. Oh, he was such a great man. You know, he made us who we were. Oh, Whitebeard and Roger and Shanks and Buggy, everyone loved him. You know, he was a man's man, you know. Oh, that Oden, you know, he's such a progressive guy. Like, Oda's been doing too much telling and not enough showing. And so I'm kind of glad that, you know, now we're getting into the flashback. We're going to finally find out what, you know, who the hell Oden was, what made him such a great person, you know, what his entire story was. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, how that frames the retainers in them. Because I'm hoping we get backstory on the retainers now. And hopefully that will be what provides us with, you know, that emotional connection to them. To find out, you know, where do they come from and how do they get to uh, where they are now. But, I like, I don't know, like, Oda's leaned a little bit too heavily into how perfect... Oden is and you know how lovable he is and how progressive he is and in a series like OP you know where you have so many male characters where he consistently does kind of like the same beats over and over and over again I'm not too enthused about having another male character that kind of falls into a lot of those tropes again like if Oden had been a woman instead or you know if he wasn't a cis hetero uh, man, I would probably be far more excited, anticipatory for what's going to have happened in the past with Wano, because uh, I think that would have played better with the idea of, you know, this being a conservative country and, you know, Oden being like a rabble rouser is trying to overturn and, you know, kind of make it more progressive than it is. But like I said, we haven't got to the flashback stuff yet, so I'll reserve judgment uh, for now. Until we kind of deep dive into it a little bit further and we find out more about who he is and what he was and all that stuff. Uh, I don't think I mentioned this in my last video. This is kind of like last little point before I wrap up here. Uh, I think I mentioned this on Twitter only and not on my video. Uh, the whole Kozuki, you know, having kept the borders closed now is, in my opinion, going to be related to the Poneglyph somehow. Because, uh, you know, I wrote a theory way, way, way back a couple of years ago talking about how I feel like the Kozuki clan were allies to uh, the ancient kingdom way, way back in the past. And the reason they kept their borders closed was to protect, uh, was, you know, very Skypea like to protect, uh, you know, the message on the Poneglyphs and save it for, you know, the, the chosen one, basically, uh, who's going to end up being Luffy. So I feel like we're going to find out that's why the whole thing is. So I'll be curious to find out more about Wano's kind of backstory and how everything came to it 
and stuff like that. Oda's always been uh, mostly good with the world building stuff, so that should be a little bit intriguing and interesting, at least for that stuff. Uh, and I'm not going to put any guesses on to how long the flashback stuff is. Uh, I have to kind of go back and look at how long the others were. I expect it to be at least Skypea length, I want to say, in terms of getting the backstory. I feel like he needs to dedicate a good couple of chapters to it just based on, you know, where we're at in this point in the story now. Uh, but, yeah, well, hopefully it's interesting and hopefully Oden, you know, his character lives up to the hype that Oda has been selling. And I hope we find out more about the retainers and everything else. A uh, quick little thing before I finish off here I wanted to mention. I noticed in the Volume 94 SBS was a curious comment I wanted to talk about. I was going to put it on Twitter, but I don't think I've had a chance to do it yet. I was kind of waiting for Stephen and the uh, One Piece podcast kind of put out the official uh, translation for it. But someone mentions that, you know, uh, Okiku, when she was a child, looks a lot like Izo did. Uh, Izo from the Whitebeard Pirates did. And someone was asking what was the connection there. And Oda was kind of playing coy a little bit with that being like, oh yeah, you know, there was nine scabbards in the past, huh? And I was like, oh yeah, there's some kind of connection there. And you're like, we'll find out, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I'm wondering if this flashback will kind of address something about that. Uh, but I was curious about that. It just stuck out to be as being odd. Uh, so like I said... Uh, if you have any comments, if you disagree with anything I've said, you know, any of the salty comments I've made on this video regarding, you know, the retainers, Oda's approach to certain stuff, uh, please, you know, feel free to leave me a comment uh, below with your take on it. I'd be more than happy to, you know, have a discourse on that. And I'm definitely open to, you know, different interpretations and uh, takes on it. Uh, but apart from that, like I said, uh, expect Promised Neverland Spy X Family to drop tonight as well. And expect my Elite and Vinland Saga read-throughs to resume uh, next weekend. And hopefully I'll have some more time to put out some stuff then. And uh, yeah, if you like my videos, please do, you know, follow, subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. Because it really does uh, help me out a lot. You know, it'll help me get a permanent channel marker on YouTube will help me grow my brand a little bit, help me you know, put up more videos and stuff and appeal to uh, more people. So until next time, this is Ash. Talk to you all later.